Hi everybody, welcome to Bow and Button. It's Katie and Caroline here. Hi guys. Um, we're doing things a little bit differently um, because of COVID-19. Um, we're trying a different format. We are shooting remotely, but we're still both here for you uh, to present you and your little ones with some hopefully helpful information. So today we're gonna to talk about um, tick bite and bug bite prevention and what to do if your child does get bit, um, how to take care of them at home. Um, so we just wanted to review that with you as we're getting into spring season and starting to see some uh, insects pop up. So the first thing we want to talk about is how to keep ticks away from your skin. First of all, ticks are, they love humid areas, wooded areas, low-lying shrubs. So, you know, they can be in your yard or in a wooded area. You want to try to stay on the clear path, stay on the trail when you're hiking. Um, and also there are other ways to prevent ticks from attaching to your skin by wearing clothing that might cover the majority of your skin. So cool, long sleeve shirts, um, long pants, tuck in your socks. Katie, what's your favorite shirt that you use for your kids when you guys are hiking? Yes, so whenever we go hiking, I always make sure my kiddos obviously have closed toed shoes on. I have them tuck their pants into tall socks and wear long sleeves. Um, there are there's some clothing that has permethrin woven through it, and um, that's a great um, a great tick deterrent. Um, my favorite I have um, right here is from Bug Smarties, and it has permethrin woven through it. Um, they have it in tons of different colors. It's nice and lightweight, um, and it it lasts for about seven laundering. So it's it you know lasts a pretty long time, um, and it's a, a great product. Yeah, those those Bug Smarty shirts are great. Um, what I also really like to launder your clothes in is a permethrin um, fabric treater. This permethrin is the most effective. Um, not only repellent for tick, but kills ticks. It's not available to apply directly on your skin, so you should never put it on your skin, but it's great to wash your clothes with, and this is one of um, the great brands you can use. You can purchase the shirts like the one that you had, and then also they come in sprays that you can spray onto the outside of tents, for example. Yes, and I, um, in the fall, took a trip to Guatemala, a medical mission trip, and we did spray our sleeping bags and equipment with the permethrin spray, um, which was which was great, made us feel a little safer there. So um, another, another thing that's important to use anytime you go out in the woods for you or your kiddos is a bug spray that contains DEET. And I have two, um, two options here with different percentages of DEET. With children, you wanna make sure you aren't using anything that's higher than a 30% DEET. Um, and you do wanna make sure not to get it in their face, around their face or eyes or mouth um, or hands. And then um, when you're done outside, you wanna wash it off really well. Um, this one is Family Care, it's 15%, and then this one is Deep Woods, and it's a 25%, and the brand is just off. It's one of my favorite brands, um, and it is safe to use on your kiddos. The higher the percentage of DEET, the longer it's going to last, so you want to use the lowest percent that you need to cover the time period you're going to be outside. Right, and, and you also just want to use that on kiddos that are two months or older, and um, don't use it on the face. You can put some on the hands and tap the top of the scalp and around that area, but you wanna to try to avoid any mucous membranes like the mouth or the eyes. Definitely, definitely. And then we have some other bug sprays and other um, products that are better for mosquito repellent. Um, you know, ticks, you kinda of need the big guns, but mosquitoes, you can go more the herbal route sometimes. Um, we do have a lemongrass um, eucalyptus insect repellent. This is recommended. This does not have DEET in it. It's just um, lemongrass and eucalyptus, um, but we would recommend this for children three and older only. Um, and then we also have um, these little, um, by Newbie, little clips that you can put on 
your diaper bag or your stroller. I have one clipped here on my stroller. Um, just as an additive, you know, added little protection. Another great thing that Caroline, I think you use this too, right? With your kiddos? Your yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's a stroller net and you can just put this over the stroller if you're out for a walk or if you have a pack and play at the beach, you can put this over the stroller and it's a mosquito net um, just to keep baby uh, safe and protected, protected, really good airflow. Um, and it, it's a great, great thing, option. Yeah, those are great, especially for those babies under two months when you, know, you don't have much you can use. So those are really, really great. So guys, we also have a great link that you can go to that we'll provide. Um, it's at healthychildren.org and it's how to choose the best insect repellent for your child. That link will also link to an epa.gov site which actually lists the brand and the generic name for each insect repellent so you can look that up as far as uh, safety and efficacy for your child. The next thing we want to talk about is unfortunately if a tick gets attached, how do you remove a tick? What's the safest way? And the best way to remove a tick is to use fine tip tweezers and you want to grasp the head of the tick, pull straight upward until the head is released. You don't want to grab or twist the body because sometimes the body is engorged and that can inject things into the skin. So grab at the head, pull straight up. And Katie, you have some favorite um, tick removing products? I do, yes. This is a little kit um, from Tick Check that um, you can easily buy on Amazon. It's great if you're out in the woods a lot, if you, you know, are fly fishing or camping or hiking, just to throw this in your, in your bag or fanny pack. And there's two different um, things here, tools here. This one is to use for um, a dog tick or a bigger adult tick. Um, and you kind of go under the tick, under the head, and then pull up. And then there's also a set of really, really fine um, tweezers. And this would be good to use for a deer tick or a nymph um, tick, which is a baby tick. And it's important to know that um, particularly nymph deer ticks can be as small as a fleck of pepper. So sometimes your children can be bit um, by a nymph deer tick and you would never know. Um, so we do want to review with you signs and symptoms of Lyme disease, um, you know, because it, it is an important thing to be able to recognize quickly and go into your pediatrician for prompt treatment. And definitely guys, when you're removing the ticks, don't feel bad. You know, Katie and I, when we have to remove ticks in the office, sometimes when you grab at the head, you know, you really want to pull straight up and you might get a chunk of skin and, and that's okay. It, it may be a bit ouchy for your kid, but when you're all done, um, you know, you can clean the area with soapy water and just watch for any signs of infection. Yes, and it's better to do that than to have an embedded head left behind, which then can get infected and, and cause um, a cellulitis or skin infection. So um, although it's, like Caroline said, it's a little ouchy when we take that little piece of skin along with it, you know you got the head then, so it's a little bit safer. So. Yeah, definitely. So the best thing to do is regular tick checks on your child. Um, especially when you or, or your children come in from being outside and places that those ticks, those little things can get into, you really want to run your, your fingers gently over the skin um, in all areas, particularly um, areas that you might not think about. So check the scalp, the hairline, the neck, ears, you know, within the outside of the ear, behind the ear. Um, the belly button is a big one. Basically any place also where the body can bend, you know, behind the knees, um, between fingers and toes. You just really have to do a, a total body check each time that um, your child comes in from playing outside. So we just want to review some of the hallmark signs and symptoms of Lyme disease um, because like we said earlier, sometimes, you know, you'll never know that your child was bit um, by a tick, uh, you know, so um, some of the most uh, common symptoms are headache, joint pain, aches, 
um, chills, fever, sometimes kiddos can even have swollen glands, um, fatigue, and then about 80% of people that do have Lyme disease um, develop a classic bullseye rash, and that can be around the site where, the, where you were bit, or it can be anywhere on your body. Um, so definitely if you notice any of those symptoms, you don't have to have them all together, but if you notice any of those symptoms, especially during high season for tick bites, uh, it would really be great if you know you took your kiddo into the pediatrician right away for a prompt visit. Um, we do treat Lyme disease with antibiotics. Um, and uh, you know it's important to know that you need to finish that full course of antibiotics. Um, and then once you're treated, you can, if you're bit again by another tick carrying Lyme disease, you can get Lyme disease again. You don't develop any immunity to that, so. So Caroline, what are the most frequently asked questions you hear in the office regarding Lyme disease and tick bites? Yeah, Katie, I mean, I think, as you know, parents come in and they're pretty worried. And um, first, I just wanna say, you know, your child will likely be okay. Um, you know, we have something we can use to treat um, Lyme disease, so that's helpful. Um, but also there's some other questions that parents frequently ask um, if Lyme disease can, is contagious and it's not contagious. Um, it's only transmitted um, from the tick. It's not transmitted person to person. Um, another frequently asked question is, um, can my child be diagnosed with Lyme disease? And I think Katie, you hit on this earlier. Um, if there's no evidence of a tick bite and they can have Lyme disease and sometimes there's no evidence of a tick bite. Um, is there a vaccine for Lyme disease? No, there used to be a vaccine that they took off the market. Um, so currently there's no effective vaccine. And then the last um, you know, myth that we commonly hear is, um, is Lyme disease chronic? And honestly, doctors you know, don't believe that Lyme disease is chronic at this point, but you know, we do know that some children experience a post-infectious syndrome um, with fatigue and difficulty concentrating, similar to what you would see with some other viruses like mono. Um, so that is definitely something that you can see, but the disease itself is not chronic. Great, that's really helpful information, Caroline. Thank you. Guys, if you have any questions or comments, please message below or feel free to direct message us. We'd love hearing from you. And take care, stay safe, have fun in the great outdoors. Just use your bug spray. Bye guys. Bye.